Stick around till the end of today's video to figure out which nine people won themselves an Illinois Lock Company duo. Hey everybody, Diggs here for Lockpickers United, and welcome back to Mentorship Monday. Today we're going to be talking about progressively pinning locks, and what that is, and how it can help you learn how to pick. So if you didn't see last Friday's video with OpAmp, I suggest you go back and watch that, because it's all about threading chambers and being able to use set screws to quickly use this process on your average run-of-the-mill cylinder. Now there are other locks where this process isn't really possible, and so I'm going to show you how you would go about it in a lock where you're just not going to get threaded chambers. So what I have in front of me is this American 1100 series. And if you notice, the key is kind of welled out. I, this is going to become a challenge lock at some point when I have some time for it. But today, we're just going to put it back together a little bit so I can show you how progressive pinning works. So the basic theory is, if I can't pick this lock with all of its pins in, maybe I can pick it with less. And so you start with one pin stack, and then you progress to two, and three, and four. And that's why it's called progressive pinning. Now, in high security locks, where you have other locking elements like sidebars and sliders and finger pins, things like that, it's a little more advanced. And so we're going to wind up doing a whole nother video on progressive pinning of high security locks. Since Mentorship Monday is really aimed at the beginner, we're going to be talking about one of these uh, threshold locks, I'll call it. So right around orange belt is where a lot of people get stuck. And even more people get stuck at green belt because they don't want to uh, make that challenge lock to move up to blue belt. But this lock here is a blue belt lock. And while it is difficult in the beginning, if you take it down a notch by removing some pins and practice with a few in and then add them back as you practice, you'll find that this lock is much easier to pick than you thought. You'll be able to hone in better on the tension required and uh, it will just make you a better picker at that particular lock. And so it's not a fix for knowledge, it's not a fix for practice, but it will help you learn how to pick. You just have to be careful not to use it as a crutch. So as you can see, this lock is already taken apart. What I'm going to do here is put it back together partially and show you what we're talking about. So you can see I've got all of the key pins laid out here, all the drivers here, springs. This is some hardware that holds the lock together. This is your lock body plug. This cap right here is your retention at the bottom of the lock. It kind of holds everything in by using these two pieces of hardware. And then the C-clip for the back of the plug. I also have a Phillips head screwdriver up here for this screw and a follower in case I decide to use it. Um, I don't know about this 1100. I haven't really taken it apart and put it back together a bunch of times, so maybe I'll need it, maybe I won't. So if all you've ever picked is, let's say, master locks, you know, 3s, 140s, when you step up to an 1100, it can be a bit of a shock. And it's because it's better made. Uh, it just is. The pins in it are security pins, so this might be the first time you're facing serrated pins. And if you can take a look at these, I'll zoom in just for a second here. You can see I've got a serrated spool because it's a spool pin, but there's a serration on both of these ends. And then just a serrated pin, serrated spool, serrated, serrated spool. And then if you look at the key pins, all of them that are longer than the shortest cut, which these two are, have serrations on those as well. And so what you'll find is if you're carefully picking this lock, you're going to wind up with a lot of clicks. And so it becomes important that you can differentiate the sound of one click from another. And I know that sounds a little crazy if you're brand new, but it is very possible. One is a lighter, shallower click, and one is a much more deeper, um, satisfying click. And through feedback, you'll be able to tell when a pin is uh, either moving past a serration or a spool, or when it's actually set. If you don't know what feedback is, it's essentially what you can feel through the pick in your hand. And uh, as locks change states, as pins change states, they tend to uh, click and they move in a specific way. And after some practice, you'll be able to identify what's what. 
especially with spools. Spools are great at telling you a story. So when these get hung up on this bottom lip here and the shallower, uh, the narrower part of the pin, when you push on them as they bind, they'll actually force the plug to counter rotate. They'll, it'll rotate against the direction that you're tensioning. And the first time you feel it, it'll throw you off. You'll be like, whoa, what's going on here? Uh, but after you felt it a couple of times, you'll say, oh, okay, I've got a spool there. And you'll just ease off tension a little bit, and you'll be able to move that spool past the shear line. So I'm going to pretend like I've never picked an 1100 before, and uh, I've just taken this apart for the first time, and I've managed to keep everything in order, which is uh, quite a feat for never having taken one apart. But anyway, uh, I've got my pins arranged here, and last Monday I showed you if these get all scrambled up, you can just use the key and the plug to figure out which pins go where. It's really not that hard. It just is a little guessing game and you'll get it right. So I'm just going to put one pin stack back in and go a little bit slower. I know the last video, that was like a, a proof video from forever ago. And you might not have caught everything. So we just drop the uh, key pin down in there. And we can set this aside. And we're going to pick up our lock body here. We're going to put whoop, these springs, all the pins and the springs in the... Uh, 1100 series are smaller than average and so they're very easy to drop if you've got uh, Pinning tweezers that are designed for bigger pins But anyway, I'll note this again the way you tell the front of an American hundred block body is that little shelf right there and that gives you the space for the uh, The face of the plug to be flush with the face of this Bible, so we're just going to drop this spring into chamber one and we've got a spool that goes in here. Try and get this guy. And so at this point, I'm going to come in from the back side. Try and get a good view of this for you. I'm going to take the pinning tweezers in from the back side and then use the tweezers and the spool. So yeah, I can just set it down in there. Uh, and this is something about 1100s that's actually pretty helpful. All right, that's there, and it's in the way of sliding the plug back in, but it's not in the way enough that it's going to bother us. So all we got to do is make sure that we have the longer part of our tailpiece facing down towards that driver pin, and you can even kind of just push it down out of your way, for the first pin anyway. Lever it in there, and boom. We've got our first pin. First pin stack is installed, and it's locked up. Now, it, it will turn to the left, which is really interesting to me. I've never actually seen that, but it will not turn to the right, which is the direction you have to turn it to unlock the lock. So we've got that first pin stack in there. We're going to take this C-clip, put it on the back of the lock. And now we can slide this down in here. You see that uh, silver plate there? It's a different metal than everything else. That's the um, kind of the rapid fix that American deployed to fix a bypass for this lock, wherein you could just stick a tool straight back to the back side of the keyway and actuate the uh, locking mechanism. So I'm going to knock that out and show you that. It does not want to come out, so I'm going to have to help it out. Okay, now it's loose. So you can see there's that space back there on the uh, lower portion. And if you wanted to, you could just kind of turn that. But once they added this little metal piece here, it kind of forces you to either puncture it and use another tool, or, uh, you know, actually pick it. Which, on a lock like this, it's not that difficult, so you might as well just pick it. All right, so now we've got that. It just kind of rests in there. You can see it's to one side. You can see that it's one side of the uh, screw, where the screw comes in. And then this tab here slides down into a groove that's cut into the larger lock body. It sits down there. This little th inside threaded cap goes in there, and then you go down through the shackle hole with the Phillips head. 
tighten that back up. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right. So now the lock's put back together. The key will work. It's just going to actuate one part of it instead of all of it. Now, it's actually in the right position. You stick the key in. Boom. Actuates the first pin stack, and you're done. So now this lock is one-fifth of its fighting power. It's only got one pin stack to fight against you. And I mean, I might be at a practice, but I'm pretty sure that it would be very easy to pick this. Uh, quick note about tensioning locks in general. You see that first pins right there? And there's this standoff on these uh, tension wrenches, right? If you set them in there all the way, they will actually sit on that first pin and if you tension it down right there, you're actually providing um, force against the pin and causing it to bind when it shouldn't. Wow, okay, so that first pin stack actually doesn't do anything. Weird. Well, you know, that's something that you find out by progressive pinning. You wouldn't know that any other way, right? Let's check this out again. All right, I'm gonna take this key back out. I'm just gonna rotate this core. Look at that. Okay, so by design, that first cut pin is sitting right at the shear line. I mean, you would not you would never know that unless you were going through this process, right? I mean, you, you might be able to figure it out you know, you, that pin one never binds. It seems like you only pick the back four and then it opens. Uh, but this is the only way to be truly sure of that. So we know for a fact that this pin just happily normally sits right at the shear line and it's not even gonna fight you. So you don't even have to pick it. And it's also the longest key pin. So it's almost like the only thing it's doing up there, see how low that is? The only thing it's doing is blocking you from picking up underneath it and getting these higher cut pins. Uh, but anyway, progressive pinning is really not that in-depth of a subject uh, at this level. It's more about uh, getting your hands on some basic tools and taking locks apart and putting them back together piece by piece with little breaks for practice picking as you go along. And you'll notice that the binding order will change as you do this. Let's say you put in pin stack 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, but the binding order is actually 3, 4, 2, 1 you will be able to figure that out as you pin the lock up. You'll notice that the first pin that binds changes, and if you write that down, you'll discover the binding order by that process. And once you know the binding order, then you can feel around in the lock, get comfortable with pin spacing, and um, you'll be able to tell, okay, well I know this pin is going to bind first, so I can reach in there, count to it by touching each pin tip. All right, now I'm on pin four, and this is what binding feels like. And also, because you know it's the one that's going to bind, you can say, um, am I tensioning too much or too little? And you can discover the exact right amount of tension for your lock. American locks, um, at least 1100 series, they tend to like really light tension, but you kind of just have to feel it out, right? Because my light is not going to be someone else's light and we are going to go pretty in depth on tension and try and do that video really well. Uh, I actually wanted to do that this week, but after uh, Op Amp's awesome video Friday on making that practice lock, we talked about it and decided since we are starting this competition and we're really trying to push some people past their boundaries and pick some harder locks, it would probably be a really useful topic for some new people to realize that learning how to pick locks also involves taking them apart and putting them back together. Uh, progressive pinning is an enlightening process on beginner locks and very difficult locks. Um, and I, I will be honest with you, I didn't stage this at all. I did not know that this first pin stack sits right at the shear line, and I find that kind of hilarious. I've never run across that before, 
at least in any of the locks I've owned. I've seen other people run across that same thing. But um, I hope you get the gist. Uh, you, you'll realize that the ones that you can't tap, you are going to have to gut and put back together you know, at least five times if you want to do five individual pin stacks. And it becomes even more tedious if you've got one that can't be uh, easily disassembled and you're doing sidebars and extra stuff. But we're going to do that in a whole nother video, uh, a part two of progressive pinning. And I think that I've covered the general idea well enough at this point. If you have any questions, please ask them below. Uh, I would love to see what I missed. So hopefully this video is useful for you. And um, I am really looking forward to tomorrow's video. I hope you come back and watch uh, our teardown of the Banham M2002. That's the lock of the week this week. And it's a really cool one. Uh, it's an awesome mechanism. It seems to be real hit or miss on difficulty. But um, it's a cool lock to see. Uh, the mechanism is real neat. And I'm going to be the one picking it this week. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And please ask any questions you've got. We'd love to be able to improve the quality of these videos as we go along and uh, really lay out a solid foundation and a track for learning for new pickers. And now it's time to announce the winners of all these awesome duos down here. I'm going to just pan up to a list I wrote on my chalkboard. And here's our winners right here in the middle. We got Pyro 3RG, D33K4Y, Sam I Am, Chris H, Doug Rhein, Rain maybe, not sure, William, not going to pronounce your last name correctly, Mel Lowry, Jason Allen 19, and Ben Keen. So out of these names, the only one that I actually recognize is Ben Keen. I know I've seen you in the Discord, so I'll hit you there. Everybody else, please shoot us an email at unitedlockpickers at gmail.com. And uh, that way we can trade information and we can get your giveaways out to you. Happy picking.